This video is going to be another look at a commonly used formation in the NFL, college football, high school, at basically any level of football called Pro Twins. If you're unfamiliar with the way that I'm labeling formations, you're basically thinking about cutting the formation in half down the midline, you know, down the hash. I'll show a picture here in a moment and let you see it. Pro, tw Pro refers to one side of the formation. Twins refers to the other. I'm going to talk about the formation uh, as it stands with Pro Twins A and Pro Twins B. And then a slight variation of, of Pro Twins that it would call Twin Slot. Uh, the terminology may be off-putting for some of you initially. You know, try to stay put, it, stay with it. I'm going to have three sections of video. This first one is going to be Pro Twins A. I'm going to let the plays flow as some of my commentary goes. Uh, as each play begins, you'll see two people spot shadowed. That it'll be the running back and the tight end. So the designation A means the running back and the tight end are on the same side. In this case, to the boundary. The ball is on the right hash. So to the bottom side of our screen here is the boundary. Everything up here to this, to this side would be the field. So normally with uh, Pro Twins, you're getting the <clears throat> Twins set to the field, just like the Packers have it set here, which is the target area um, on the second play that I'm going to show you in a moment. And the, and the tight end and the running back are set into the boundary, just like you see here on the second one. This time uh, Aaron Rodgers is targeting into the boundary uh, to, the, to the pro side, to the tight end Z side. The offense will most often have an advantage, a six to five into the boundary, or maybe six to five and a half, since the running back is set over there when it's Pro Twins A. Again, you're going to see spot shadow at the beginning of every play. It'll show you where the tight end and the running back are. That's the entire designation that I'm explaining to people A and B, trying to help people who maybe don't have a background uh, of terminology come up with one or have one that you can use when you watch a game this season, be it college, preseason, NFL, or regular season, playoff, Super Bowl, so that you have some terminology you can use to classify things in your brain. If you're the type of person that likes to write things down, uh, keep track of data independently like I am, I'm trying to give you a system to do so. This is a system that was handed to me. All right, so back to the formation. You'll normally see a nine technique defensive end outside of the tight end into the boundary because that's where the tight end is, the pro side is the tight end and the Z receiver here. The twin side is the two receivers to the top side. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Now this, I believe, is a second and long situation for the Broncos against the Rams. These plays are going to cycle through again. The Bengals utilize, a, they're, they're one of the teams that I have the most film of using Pro Twins A and Pro Twins B. They love to set the tight end and the running back into the boundary, like I talked about. Pro Twins, if you ask me, gives the offense... A little bit less ability to change the numbers quickly since the tight end is on the line of scrimmage here in a three-point stance and he can't quickly motion to the other side of the formation unless he steps off the line and conversely when he steps off the Z receiver has to step back on the line of scrimmage so it gives the offense if you ask me a little bit less ability to change the numbers since that tight end's kind of locked in uh, pre-snap on the line of scrimmage It's a spread formation by alignment, meaning there's a horizontal spread to the formation. It does show a three-man surface to the pro side. So I don't, I'm not using the end zone angle intentionally. I'm only using all 22. you got the guard here, the tackle, and then you can see the tight end's helmet there. I believe that's Hayden Hurst. That's what I mean when I say three-man surface, whereas to the bottom side, you've got guard, tackle. It's only considered a two-man surface. So it's a spread formation horizontally that also offers you a three-man surface to one side because the tight end's on the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's the designation pro. It's a two-by-two two formation, so it's balanced numbers-wise. Two receivers to the twin side, the two stand-up wide receivers, and then two receivers to the boundary, which in this case was the downside, um, Hayden Hurst and number 80. It can force the defense to tip their hand coverage-wise because there's a horizontal spread, also because you have a three-man surface into the boundary. Running back becomes a real pain for the defense numbers-wise. Since the tight end is typically set to the boundary, the A or B can manipulate the defense and, and attack certain players. And what I mean by that is you can attack the nickel defender if you want to. You can attack the boundary side inside a linebacker, which a lot of teams choose to do. You can isolate the mic by route concept and depth and attack him, which you'll see here in a moment when Hayden Hurst catches a touchdown pass behind Josh Bynes in a zone drop. You can run a spacing or a snag concept to the tight end running back and Z side, which the Broncos ran a moment ago. 
The Bengals love to run slant flat. I'll show some examples of that later. I'm going to talk about Joe Burrow at length and why I think this formation um, is really fantastic for him and the Bengals' usage. They use a lot of pro, t pro twins, be it A or B, and, and I think that they like it because they can attack to the boundary with the quick game, with the tight end, running back, and the Z, or they can attack to the field with the slant flat or any number of vertical passing concepts that the Bengals utilize with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Boyd. I think that Burrow is really comfortable in horizontal spread formations and, and concepts like the one you just saw, slant flat, essentially. Well, actually, that was a that was an end by number one. You'll see slant flat when I show you Pro Twins B. Burrow is exceptional at throwing down the field, don't get me wrong, particularly outside the numbers. I think perhaps one of his most comfortable formations is empty. And I've talked about that a couple of times in the last couple of years. When the Bengals are in second and long and they need yards in the second half of a, of a game that's tightly contested, they're going to go empty. Burrow is comfortable in formations that offer two or three receivers to each side. So an empty is normally three by two, three to one side and two to the other. This particular formation, the one I'm talking to you about tonight, Pro Twins, is a two by two set. I think Burrow is extremely comfortable at pre-snap reads in terms of how the defense is lined up and then making his choice of where to go with his initial read. I just think he's super smart and brilliant pre-snap in determining which side to attack first with the initial read. Pro Twins is different than Empty, which I was making my point about initially, uh, but it still kind of creates that horizontal spacing, if you ask me, out of 11 personnel. The difference is you have the running back in the backfield as a run threat. Now, in these A-gun cut-ups that I'm showing you so far, they happen to be all pass plays. That, that, was, that happened inadvertently, to be honest with you. Teams do run the ball out of Pro Twins A, uh, but I'll show you a slightly better or more diverse variation of Pro Twins in a moment. Now, this is actually pro, pro slot at a 12 personnel because this tight end is lined up tight to the left tackle. So we would call him a slot in the configuration um, or terminology that I know. Pro Twins A, if you ask me, is for getting back to the Bengals. It really lets Burrow decide which side to go to depending on the defense's alignment from a two by two formation. I think it, I don't think it forces the defense to give away the exact coverage they're playing. But I think that quarterbacks, the really prepared ones, can look at the defense's alignment and determine what coverages are available and what coverages the defense is going to askew or not use from a particular alignment. I think it kind of simplifies or helps Joe Burrow or any quarterback who makes those pre-snap reads, to be honest with you, um, into determining what coverages are not going to be used on that particular play. So the last element that I'm going to cover here is actually a slight variation. It's called twin slot. Basically, the tight end and the running back still on the same side. We're going to let these plays cycle through again. But now the tight end's off the line of scrimmage, and the Z receiver is on. You get a nice look at it here. The Z receiver, which I believe is T. Higgins to the downside here, is on the line of scrimmage, so he can't motion unless he steps off. And the tight end that you just saw, motion number 84, underrated football player. I don't even know his name, to be honest with you, but underrated guy. You can see he's off the line. Tight end. Running back still on the same side, so it's still A, but it's not pro twins. It's twin slot because you have twin receivers here. That's the twin. And then slot here to the other side, twin slot A. It offers a little bit more versatility because the tight end can move without the tight end and the Z having to step off or step on the line of scrimmage. They've created a little bit different run threat, to be honest with you. And in pass pro, to be honest with you, you can, you can have the tight end uh, release outside on an RPO like the Eagles just did. is a very effective concept for them. A lot of teams use it, use it. You can have the tight end slide across the back of the formation post-snap, post like split zone concept, or Y hide where he sneaks out to the other side of the formation. Kind of give those linebackers and safeties some eye candy, something to hesitate on. I'm, I'm talking about twin slot A to use it to compare to Pro Twins A in that the tight end is less versatile in terms of what he can do post-snap. So let me just re-explain. The Eagles example had the tight end, you know, releasing out into the flats. They completed a big pass to him down to like the two-yard line. You saw it like two or three plays ago. Post-snap, you could also have him go across the line and run, have the offensive line run zone 
into the boundary, split zone. Some people call it slice, whatever you want to call it. It's the tight end or H-back sliding across the heels of the offensive line to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage to give this running back potentially a cutback lane behind that kickout block, split zone. You could also run the same concept with the tight end post snap, make it look like it's going to be a kick out and then slide out into the flats, try to take advantage of some open space out here into the flats for the quarterback to hit him on like a play action concept. Finally, the third part of it, the advantage or one of the benefits of having him off the line of scrimmage, slide him across the formation, have him help block the end man on the line of scrimmage in pass pro, kind of get that six guy in pass pro, maybe let the running back release out into the flats. Some of these things are consistent with twin slot A, which is what you're seeing again here, and pro twins A. Again, tight end running back into the boundary. But certain teams, like the Bengals, if you ask me, at least from what I saw, they like to run the ball more at a twin slot A versus pro twins A. I don't have enough data yet compiled to prove that. My formations are really done for the Ravens primarily. I'm trying to work through AFC North teams and get their formations down, at least for those that kept their offensive coordinators for 2023. But in any case, the Bengals love 11 personnel. They love 11 personnel formations. Pro Twins is one of them. Twin Slot is the other. Eagles use it effectively. You see it here with a bunch of RPOs into the boundary. They create basically with two wide receivers to the field. They usually draw a three over two. So what I mean by a three over two is what you see right here. Here's the twin side, and then you see three over two. So conceptually, in terms of coverage to the downside, they feel like there's a little bit more space to attack down here since you've got an inside linebacker as that number three defender from the sideline at the second level. When I say number three defender, I'm excluding the defensive line from that count. One, two, three. Your count may be slightly different here because... Uh, the safety and the nickels alignment, but one, two, three. So basically we're comparing this defender's ability to defend pass concepts in space to this defender's ability, the inside linebacker, into the boundary. That's why some teams, you know, utilize a, a faster hybrid inside linebacker into the boundary on passing downs. But in any case, the Eagles utilize two wide receivers to the field. They usually get three over two. So the RPO to the boundary which is going to be to our left, the Eagles' right on this particular play, they can really use to attack a boundary side inside linebacker to make it to where he can't be right, no matter what he chooses. I'm talking about out of twin slot A. All right, getting back to kind of the, the overall topic of the video, Pro Twins, this is now going to be Pro Twins B. So again, you will see spot shadow on the tight end and the running back, pre-snap, I've, I've got it paused so that you can see who spot shadow tight end is up top to the offense's right into the boundary running back is now to the downside of the formation to the field the offense is left the difference here is still a two by two formation it's still a balanced formation but now the running back and tight end are on different sides although the running back is on the other side the weak side remember anything that's designated as pro omits the running back from that designation so it's still pro twins even though the running back's on the opposite side, here's the pro side, tight end on the line, Z receiver off the line. That's the, design, that's, that's the definition of a Z. And then you have twins to the field, pro twins B, because the running back is now on the opposite side of the tight end. If you have some other terminology that you're aware of, king, queen, near, far, you know, feel free in the comment section to let me know. Uh, but in any case, again, you can't get the tight end in motion because he's on the line now, hence the word pro. He can quickly go out into the flats, but it's a little easier for, to run him out into the flats, if you ask me, from a two-point stance when he's in the slot. The Bengals love pro twins, as I said earlier. In this section of plays, you're going to see two examples of slant flat. I have a lot of Bengals film, and I've come to the conclusion, like I said, this is maybe I'm two years late on this, that Joe Burrow is, is just devastating in formations that have two receivers to each side pre-snap so that he can, he can look at the defense, see how they're lined up, one high safety, two high safety. Where's the nickel defender? Where's the boundary side inside linebacker? How many guys are lined up within five yards of the number one and number two receivers? And Joe Burrow's done his homework with the offensive staff, and he understands, maybe he doesn't understand exactly what coverage it's going to be every time, but he knows what coverage it's not. Look, don't get me wrong, Burrow's really good under center. or He's really good in trips formations. I've already established I think he's great in empty formations. But I suspect he's really good at seeing the field pre-snap and using defensive alignments to help him decide which side to attack. And, and here's what I mean. 
I think that, as I said a couple times earlier, maybe he doesn't know the coverage with 100% certainty, but I think he can look at the defense's alignment oftentimes and know what it's not. So the Ravens like to use a lot of too high safety alignments against the Bengals in 2022 to great effect. Two safeties, 10, 12 yards deep. The Ravens kind of making it look like, you know, it could be a one high look with the safety spinning down. They did a lot of, in week five, rolling one safety back, rolling this guy here, running somebody on a Tampa two up the pipe in between the hash. Joe Burrow, to me, is one of those guys, he can look at the Nichols leverage, if it's inside leverage on the number two receiver to the field. He can look at the inside linebacker to the boundary, his alignment. What does it tell him? And he knows what teams utilize, what platform teams use to play particular coverage. I think he processes that information um, really quickly pre-snap and then decides which side of the field to read and target. Now, look, do a lot of quarterbacks do that in the NFL? Of course they do. All of them do it. But I suspect Burrow is really good at it because not only are his decisions accurate, but they're made very quickly. I think in some cases he's got his mind made up in terms of the side of the field he's going to read, and he's doing that based on the defense's alignment. That's why his completion percentage tends to be so high. Now, some of these plays here for real, Pro Twins B, are not the best examples, but they were chosen intentionally, to be honest with you. If you're a Bengals fan or a Ravens fan, hopefully, even if you do hate each other, you understand that those two teams engaged in three chess matches over 180 minutes of football in 2023. Too. And, and I thought the Ravens were consistently shifting the read for Burrow post-snap to try to slow his processing down a little bit. And I think they were quite effective over the course of three games. This is my second attempt at showing some formations. The first one I showed was twin wing. Twin wing A, twin wing B, twin wing pistol, or under center. I'm sharing the terminology that I was given by some coaches that are a lot smarter than me and, and a whole heck of a lot more experienced than me because they're still coaching at a high level and I'm not. Uh, so if you if you have terminology that you're more comfortable with, of course you don't have to be locked into the words and, and letters that I'm using. I'm trying to offer this to anyone who doesn't have a background that I was blessed enough to be given in terms of terminology to use to quickly process things during the game. From an offensive standpoint, would offenses call it Pro Twins A and B? No. They would have their own name that would be unique to their offensive system and whatever background their coach comes from. If you ask me, I think the Ravens did a, a great job against Burrow in 2022, even though the Bengals won two of those games. And in the first game, the Week 5 win that you see a play from here, they had the lead up until the final minute. Ravens defense played a lot of man. They rolled to cover three where they blitzed the inside linebacker and dropped an outside linebacker into the hook. They played very split field coverages, some of which I can't really describe the exact calls to you. EA Edgar Allen does a better job of understanding the, the split field calls than I do, and he's got a unique um, video series out on that. I'll try to link it up in the description somewhere. The Ravens rotated and dropped out some defensive tackles in short coverages, and then they used a whole bunch of different looks to just play a lot of Tampa 2 zone to try to limit the big play for Burrow. Let me know what you think about this video series, how I can improve it, this one's on Pro Twins A, Pro Twins B. I used Twin Slot A to illustrate and show the differences in a Pro designation versus a Slot designation. I strategically used Twin Slot A to show that difference. If I didn't do a good enough job, you know, please let me know. I certainly didn't show a great balance of run pass plays in this video, mostly pass plays, obviously. You did see a lot of short passing concepts, and that could be because I used a lot of Bengals film. I'm, I'm trying to do offensive formations and systemic studies of AFC North offenses besides the Ravens, because of course we're not going to get a chance to see the Ravens offense till the preseason, but who knows what, you know, to what level Todd Munkin will show things. I'm going to try to do film study videos on the Browns, Steelers, and Bengals as much as possible because the Ravens play those three teams in the first five weeks so that I have those already finished in my brain and I can share them on Twitter or reshare them on Twitter as previews leading up to that game. This is a foundational way that I learned the game, looking at formations. Of course, there's matchups in there, but as a young defensive coordinator, I had to find a way to communicate with players and coaches. I think there was a period of time where I didn't do a good job of that, and someone came in, uh, two people came in and helped me do so. And I found it tremendously helpful over the course of, of 10, 11, 12 years, even going down and teaching it to teaching the system, this terminology to defensive players as young as 10 and 11 years old successfully. Um, it helped us. It helped the kids. 
If you know another system, by all said, by all means, feel free to describe it in the comment section or send it to me on Twitter. You know, if you think there's a better way for me to describe some of these. If you enjoy the video, conversely, please please let me know. I'm looking to improve this product. Uh, hopefully, help out people who weren't blessed enough to be given systemic terminology or structural terminology like I was, and ways to quickly categorize uh, formations and plays, which I try to use when I chart games live, because I do it live, um, as the Ravens play on Sundays, and try, to, and try to record the formations and plays to be able to then include in my reaction videos on Sunday night. That's why it usually takes me a little bit longer time. I've got some data to sort through. If you would like for me to try to add some data to these videos, please let me know. This video, These videos continue to go on a little longer. I'd like them to be 10, 12 minutes, 20 minutes gets on a little long. But Pro Twins A, Pro Twins B, let me know what you think of the formation, what you think of the way I interpreted it. Probably an incomplete study here because I didn't show enough run concepts. But I think the pro designation with run, one running back uh, uh, makes the run game somewhat limited. And I think that's another possible explanation as to why we saw so many pass plays, along with the fact that I utilized a lot of Bengals offense film, which, again, they're, they're focused on the short passing game with Burrow and his ability to make decisions or be aware of defensive alignments and coverages pre-snap and then make the correct read post-snap to just keep the offense moving until they can find a chink in the defense's armor and go for the big play. If you uh, appreciate the graphic, please let me know. Uh, I have a, I'm very blessed to have a person making the graphics for me. Uh, I think it's an amazing graphic. If you, did, if you didn't notice it by now, the reflection in Lamar's visor has actual formations in it. Now, the names and the terminology are not the same ones that I kicked out to you today. But in any case, I thought it was a pretty amazing graphic. I wanted to use it uh, at least for the first time. Give me some feedback on the video. Let me know what you think of this series, if there's a way I can improve it to help people who, who maybe don't have a football background with terminology, uh, a foundational background, maybe I should say, um, in understanding the game from a verbal standpoint. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other people would enjoy this video, please consider grabbing the link to it, sharing it on social media to help the video get more reach.